Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at this, the Coilmaster DIY Kit version 2, right here on My Vaping Place. Hey everybody, not Joe here, nice of you to join me today, thanks for coming. What we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at this today, the DIY kit version 2 by Coilmaster. Now, I know that just about everybody and his brother out there who's a reviewer of any kind of repute has already done a review on this kit. But Joker over at Coilmaster, how you doing Joker? And thank you for sending this over to me. Asked me to take a look at this kit and to give them my take on this kit. Uh, he specifically asked me to give him a list of things that I found not only good with this kit, but anything that I might find bad with it and anything that I might have suggestions on. Well, in the following piece of uh, videotape, which I made uh, about, I think it was last week, I do just that. I Yes, it's a little bit of a gush fest about it, but I really like this kit. The quality of the tools that are in here are quite good. As a matter of fact, I would have to put them at being almost to the exceptional stage. The quality of the steel, the quality of the workmanship, quite good. Quite good. And I'm extremely surprised at how good this kit really, really is. But... Like I said, I have a couple of suggestions and I have a couple of cripes about it. And well, we'll get into that when we get down below decks. So without any further ado, let's head on down and take a look at this little puppy. And when we're all through, we'll come back up here and we'll have a little bit more of an in-depth discussion about some of the things that I found and some of the things that I think it could make use of. But a little bit later, let's head on down. I'll see you below. Okay, folks, here we are down here on the build deck. We're going to take a look at this today, the Coilmaster version 2 DIY kit. Now, I've seen a lot of the different reviews on this that's out there already, and I really wasn't that impressed with it from what I had seen in the different reviews. But when I got this in the mail uh, direct from Coilmaster, for the purposes of this review, I was very pleasantly shocked and very pleasantly amazed at the absolute quality of this product. Um, yeah, really nice, really nice. All right, let's it's enough of the gushing. Let's take a look and see what we've got here. I've got a rubberized finish here on the outside. This is according to the Coilmaster website. This is a silicon rubber outer casing. Uh, it's got two nice big uh, rubberized hard rubber pull tabs on each of the on each of the zippers here. Zippers move really nice. As you can hear it's a pretty good quality zipper on on here. Uh, you'll have to excuse some of the greasy stains on here. That's from me using this for a uh, couple of builds that I've been doing. Yes, I have been using this already and, and working on it for the purposes of this review. And let's take a look at, let's open it up and take a look and see what we got inside. Oh, oopsie. There we go. All right, let's get this thing to lay nice and flat here. This normally doesn't do this. I had to put this little coil on here to keep this thing from pushing out too much because as you can see, the, the glue that's on the back of this high density foam here is kind of getting pushed out of the way. And well, I took a cue from the ceramic tweezers that they have here. Uh, little uh, piece of plastic tubing on there to keep it all together so all right and, and I'm jumping ahead here okay um, first things first as I said 
high density foam rubber here. This is held in place by a contact glue that's on the back of it that sticks it into the uh, back of the silicone rubber casing, which is pretty heavy duty. I'm telling you, this thing is this thing is really nicely put together. Yeah, I know. I'm having a gush fest here. What can I tell you? All right, let's take a look at the devices that are in here. You see, this is this isn't holding in there that well. They need to put a little bit better uh, stick them on the back of this. Try and keep things in the place. This here is something that's really strange. Nowhere in the literature that I've been able to find on this does it mention this hole. Now this has obviously been cut after the formation of the rubber, just like the rest of these cutouts that are in here were formed. I'm not, I have no idea what that's supposed to be for. The only thing I can guess is maybe like for, you want to, put a, like a spare coil head or something like that in there. You know, you, you got a tank that uses coil heads. You maybe can throw a spare coil head in there. I, I don't know. I, there's a couple of things here that, you know, but all right. Back to, back to doing things here. Uh, as you can see, these are the diagonal cutters. The angle of attack on the diagonal cutters head is really nice. It's very close to the pair that I've been using for the longest period of time. It's also got a nice uh, spring on here. The spring is not overly smushy, but it's also not overly stiff. And it makes things nice and easy to, 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 to use. Um, yeah, really nice. Really nice pair of cutters. I've seen wor a lot worse... I haven't seen too many better. The, the The quality of the metal on here is really good. I'm used to using uh, electronics uh, tools, you know, small electronics tools for year, the last few years, you know, last 20 years or so. And, and these are actually pretty good compared to some of the crap that I've turned around I've used. Yeah. Um, next thing. The tweezers. Uh, excuse me. The yeah, these things are hard to get out. Um, you can see things kind of lift up here and, yeah, get out of position. Needle nose pliers. Good quality steel. Good quality insulation. The spring is nice on it. Nice tactile section here. So when you're working on it your finger doesn't go slipping off of it especially if you've got a lot of e-juice and stuff like that on your fingers you're working on something you know, you're pulling on a coil yeah really nice all right let's put those back in there mm, yeah okay let's see if we can get this in here there we go. Okay. All right, next thing we got here is the, I believe this is the flat straight screwdriver. This is a metal handle that's on here. Now, if you look really closely, I don't know if you're going to be able to make this out, but you have three steps on here. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, this is a 13, 30 seconds straight blade screwdriver. It has three, I'm sorry, um, I have a little bit of an issue here with the mic getting in the way. Um, this has three little steps on here. This one here, which is the fattest, which goes directly into the handle. Next one here, and then goes down to the actual business end. According to my notes that I have here, this is 2.96 millimeters here. This is 2.45 millimeters here and 2.025 millimeters here at the very tip. Okay, so I guess you could actually even use these for if you wanted to make coils, but I don't know why you would want to use it when you've got the, the, the coil master jig right in here. So, but yeah, you could. 
You could use them for building coils if you wanted to. This is the Phillips head screwdriver. This is a number zero screwdriver. 2.96 millimeters here on this step, 2.4 millimeters here on this step, and 2.16 millimeters here on this step down here at the very end. Same thing with the flat bladed screwdriver. I don't know why you would want to use it, but you could. And the feel on these screwdrivers is really good. These things are really nice. I wish I could get a full set of these things. Like a, I have a set of jeweler screwdrivers that I've had for eons that I purchased at Radio Shack. You know, your typical jeweler screwdriver. I like the shape and feel of these. I wish I could get a full set of them just like the other ones with all the different sizes and everything else in it, but with that kind of a handle. That would be really nice. Okay, next thing we're going to take a look at here is the ceramic tweezers. Now, this is marked T1. I have no idea what that's supposed to be for, but these are nice and pointy. They have nice feel on them. They're pretty damn well put together. They're almost as good as the pair that I've been using since I've been started building. And, uh, yeah, they're pretty nice. Now, I haven't used these yet. I've been using my other pair. I want to save these because these are nice and clean. The other ones that I've got are all, you know, all burnt and everything else from working on coils. So, yeah. Okay, tweezers. I like the shape on these tweezers. These are This is really a nice pair. The pair of tweezers that I've been using are dental tweezers. I like the shape and the design on this one better. It, it's really nice. But the only thing is, is that this doesn't have any of the, the the grippiness on here that the other pair that I have has. Hmm, a little something maybe we need to work on on that. Okay, put that back there. Okay, Muji Cotton. Pack of three sheets of Muji Cotton thrown in here. Good idea. Keep it in its, in its own little bag so that it doesn't get all funky and nasty and everything else. As long as you don't open the package up, you're good to go on that. Uh, yes, next thing. Now, Coilmaster just has recently come out with their own line of wire that they're, they're offering. Um, this is a 10-foot spool of 24 AWG Kenthal A1. Nice wire. Doesn't, when I, I, I've already used this on a build, and I'll tell you right now. There's not a lot of machining oil on this on this wire because when I started doing the dry burn on it, it didn't start smoking or anything like that. It immediately just started to discolor the wire. So, yeah, nice wire, good quality wire. 24 AWG for those of you on the other side of the pond roughly equates to 0 0.50 millimeters. So, yeah, fence wire made from making nice beefy coils. I really haven't played with that thick a wire yet too much, but nice working with it on the coil that I was working it on. A pair of scissors, or scissors for those of you who don't come from the greater New York metropolitan area. Yeah, folding scissors. Really nice pair. I like the design on it. The feel of the handle is nice as well. And I like the fact that they lock into place and you don't have to worry about them folding up on you while you're in the middle of doing something. Also, I got a nice rounded tip on here so you don't won't go jamming yourself if you're cutting something and accidentally, you know, slipping. Yeah, not going to not gonna go jamming yourself. And they're pretty darn sharp. You, they don't feel sharp. Actually, no, they don't really feel sharp, but they are sharp. They, they've been cutting the cotton that I've been using on a couple of um, rewicks very nicely. Yes. Nice pair of scissors. Okay, now we come to the main part of this kit. All right, before I do that, there was a piece of cutout foam that was in here. It's This is designed for two 18, 650 batteries. The way you're seeing it right now, this is the way it comes from Coilmaster. Let me, give me a second, let me get a couple of batteries here so I can show you what we're talking about here. Okay, 
this is a couple of uh, VTC fours that I use and just throw them in here so you can get a good idea as to what it would look like yeah keeps them nice and secure they're they're in there nice they're not gonna come flying out on you and a um, couple of emergency batteries just in case you need them okay let's get down to the coilmaster coiling kit this this is the, the the heart and soul of this kit all the rest of this stuff is fluffery this is what it's been built around first off this is not your standard little blue screwdriver. This is actually an Allen key little blue screwdriver. This measures 1.5 millimeters here at the on the tip. Now, I have a couple of the aroma misers here, and these the aroma misers are using 1.25 Allen Allen keys off uh, grub screws. I'm not sure, but not having played around with a lot of other different. Um, grub screwed atomizers maybe the 1.5 is a common size maybe it's not I don't know but I personally right now I would have loved to have seen this being 1.25 but you know hey maybe a small set of these like two or three of them here included in the next version of the kit that might be a good idea yeah you know two or three of these little blue screwdrivers with the allen keys in there not a bad idea okay these are your actual coil jigs here. The, the rest of the stuff you see over here, this is the handle and the turning, uh, turning knobs. This is what you're actually going to be forming your, your coil on. You have 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and 4 millimeter forms, basically. In case you know, nobody's ever seen how these things work, let me show you. All right? For those of you out there who are well familiar with the coil master um, coiling jig you have my permission to go sleep right now okay because this is for the rest of the guys out there who've never played with one of these things and have absolutely no clue zero zilch nada on how this thing works okay just saying all right now the coiling jigs that I've been using for the absolute longest are clone it's a set of clone coiling jigs that I picked up on uh, eBay uh, they're clones of the Curo concept coilers which is very much similar to this but this clone set doesn't have some of the um, niceties that this set has I think these are going to get um, retired shall we say yeah they're definitely getting retired Okay, let's before we start doing any crazy stuff here, let's just take a quick peek at Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Sorry about that. Uh, my little dental pick here that I use on this this tool. I'll get to that in a few minutes, but this tool, I can't I can't work without it. On this here, you have two holes here on either side of the central hole. Now this one here to the left is for coiling clockwise coils. This one here is for counterclockwise, or as you say on the other side of the one, anti-clockwise coils. You open this up like so. And as you can see in here, it's got this little piece here that goes down a good fair ways. This doesn't have really anything to do with the actual jigs themselves. Let me see if I can get one of these things out of here. I clipped my nails the other day, and I can't... It's like next near... There we go. Okay. This fits in here like so. This will fit in like that. But you still got this little excess space down here. Now, one of the things that came to mind when I first saw this is if you take a little piece of... Um, like styrofoam, make a little disc here, put that in there. You can actually pop in some extra grub screws in here and actually use this as like a grub screw container. Yeah, put the styrofoam in there and then you can put that on top there and that'll keep all the grub screws nicely contained and you don't have to worry about losing them. Or you can, if you don't carry 18650s in here, you can always get yourself a couple of 
plastic or glass tubes, I would go with plastic since this is designed for traveling. And just put them in there and put your extra grub screws where you can in one and uh, you can make some pre-built coils in there in another one and keep that in there. You know, just a couple of suggestions. But to back, get back to what I was talking about. You insert the, the mandrel form for your coil in like so. So, okay. And this is a 1.5 millimeter that I'm, I've got here. So just to make it easier, and that was the first one I could get out with my clip nails. Let me screw this on like so. Now, you would take your wire, if you're going to be doing a clockwise coil, and you would push it through that hole. It would come out here, and you would hold down just a little bit of the wire here, and then you would grab one of the the cap. This is a 1.5, so you want to use the 1.5 here. And you would put that on here. You take the wire, bring it around halfway, and then you would take the wire and start making your coil, like so. So you get the proper number of wraps. And take that off, slip it out. I flip it over, grab my needle nose pliers, pull on that side, pull on that side, clean it up a little bit, and maybe take off the first wrap. I usually put on a throwaway wrap on there, uh, give back wrap as I call them, just unwrap it, so that way you get the nice perfect coil there, because the first coil wrap is always a pain. Take that off, pull it tight, snip, snip, install. Yeah, really nice really nice the quality on these on these coiler is absolutely fantastic I'm yeah my old Kuro concept clones they're getting retired I'm not I'm not gonna get rid of them I'm just gonna retire them to the excess parts bin so that way just in case if I should not be able to find these something should happen you know Heaven forbid, I still have a set of coilers around. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the kind of person to go shoot myself in the foot like that. You know, but what can I tell you? Okay, next piece, this. This is something that everybody who builds their own stuff should have. You can get away without it, but you really do need to have this. You absolutely do. It's a little volt ohm meter. The ohm meter reading here, which this is a standard 510 connector. Okay, ohm section measures from 0 0.01 to 19.9 ohms. Uh, the battery measurement, which is here, this is designed for, if you, you hold on, Inakin VV3. Yes, this is one of the first mods that I ever, I ever bought. I, I actually did a, a review on this. Three clips on. Okay. And then you would screw this in here. The standard 510 connector. Screw that into place. Turn it on. Hit the fire button. 5.20 volts. It's being applied from this battery to the voltmeter. Okay. Tells you exactly tells you exactly how good your battery is okay yes this can be used with a little bit of horsing you can use this with just about any mod that you've got out there as long as you have as long as you can get it down tight on here and without hitting the screw the switch um, takes two double-a sized I have rechargeables in here um, makes life a lot easier um, and just pop these into my standard uh, charging my standard charger and um, don't have to worry about going crazy about where I'm gonna get my next uh, next set of double A's so yeah there we go um, the other thing that I was going to suggest besides the set of Allen key little blue screwdrivers you know, the common sizes like 1, 1.25, 1 1.5, which comes when in here already. 
um, 1.75 or whatever the common screw, the most common screw, uh, Allen key grub screws are, is this a dental pick. Um, now I know a lot of people out there are going to disagree with me, but this is my own personal feeling. I use this a lot when I'm cleaning up a coil, you know, doing a rewick on it. I use this a lot. I use this to lift the coil very gently, the, the old cotton very gently out. Then I grab my tweezers. That's why I, this is a little bit crazy for me. This, there's no, no grabbing on here. You know, the, the little teeth that are on there, these don't have teeth on it. This is the pair of tweezers I use normally. This is a stainless steel dental tweezers. But as you can see, it has the teeth on here. This set doesn't. I like the shape on this, but I like the tweet. I like the teeth on here, because when you got a slippery wick that you're trying to change in a coil that you've been using, that's all gunked up and everything else. Snip, pull, pull. Especially the way I wick, I wick tight to the coil, and you need to have these teeth on here. This doesn't. If these had teeth on it, they would be perfect for me. As it is, I'm going to probably wind up still be using this set of tweezers a lot more than that one, even though I like the shape on that one better. But I get off topic again. But yeah, if you could come up with a set of a small thing to set in here of dental picks, like maybe half the size of this, you know, it doesn't have to be this long. This section here could have this in here. In other words, this here portion could come right out of that and it could just be a small little dental pick because well, I use this side here a lot. I use this for when I'm pushing like on my K-Funds on the build deck when I'm putting the wicking in between the, the flavor shield as they call it and the base of the deck. When I'm pushing in the new wick, I'm putting that in there. When I'm pulling out the old wick, I'm putting it behind there and lifting it out to clip it and then pull it out. Yeah, this is a really great shape for when you're trying to get wick into a tight spot. This one here, great for scraping off. Well, it's designed to scrape off tartar off your teeth, but it also works great to scraping off all of the 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 encrusted on gunk from your on that's on your coil when you're in this gets in between the wires yeah that's where i actually got the idea i was sitting there in the dentist's office one day and he broke this thing out and he was testing for cavities and i'm and he's like scraping on one side and i'm like hmm scraping hmm coils gunk yeah like i said if you could come up with a small tool maybe fit over here like this somewhere in this area or on this side over here something like that maybe right in there you know, put it in there like so have this part sticking up here into this section I don't know that's for the that's for the designers but yeah dental pick like this that would be great okay as you see this is what you get um, not much more really to say about this thing other than you know hey really nice nice piece of equipment here thank you joker for sending this over um this will be made quite a bit of use of this and the next review um yeah these are going to get a lot of use I really really like this kit okay enough of the gush fest right let's get back topside talk to you in a bit Okay, now that we're back up top side here, first off, I'm going to mention this. The part that you're seeing now, the first face cam in the intro, I, I just, wrote, I just uh, filmed this today. The build cam that you saw just a minute ago, that was done last week. Unfortunately, with my crazy schedule and the kind of job that I do, when I come home from work at the end of a day, I'm usually pretty pretty well knackered. I'm ready to just turn around and just sit down and veg out totally. So I have to record this stuff as I, as I get a chance to and then piece it all together and then post it up there. 
there's quite a bit of editing work that goes along with this. So a lot of the times what I have to do is I have to do this on my weekend and then paste it all together as it goes. So if I forget something here uh, that I might have mentioned in during the build cam, please understand the reasons for it. Okay. Now, let me start off with some of the, the, the negative things that I found about this, about this kit. Number one, and this is a really, this is something that's not a really big thing. It's, it's a little thing that can drive some people crazy. I know it drives me crazy. The glue that you use on the back of the closed cell foam, the high density foam that's in here that makes up the kit and keeps all the tools and everything else in their place. I don't know if you got a bad batch of it or it's not, but the, the glue that's on the back of this thing, um, mm -mm. sorry, Joker, have to tell you this, not good. It really needs to be a little bit more on the tacky side, either that or you need to do something about the inside of the case to get off any oil or anything like that or any kind of silicon residue or something like that that might be in there because I'll tell you right now this thing is not sticking very well uh, every time I take out tweezers or the diagonal cutters or the needle nose pliers the foam it comes right up and it's not good okay the more it comes up each and every time it comes up the more it's not sticking it's it, it you really need to turn around you really need to do something about that glue seriously maybe some kind of a sonic fusion or something like that where the the foam can be fused directly to the inside of the case i know it's probably going to increase the cost of the case of your production of the case but the quality from a quality wise standpoint of view i think this needs to be addressed maybe just using a different type of glue that's a little bit more sticky or something like that i don't know i would turn around and speak with your designers and the engineers that you have working on your company staff and see if they can come up with something that that will address this issue next thing the diy kit is great the little blue hex head screwdriver that you've got in there is great but it's a 1.5 millimeter hex head screw the aroma miser that i have here plus the aroma miser uh vrda that i have used 1.25 a couple of different of those hex screws screwdrivers would be something that would be greatly appreciated by me and probably a lot of other people out there as it stands we would ha if we needed to do some work on our rdas or our rdtas or rtas or whatever the heck we are using and we're using a velocity deck we're going to need to have a hex head screwdriver in there and the one that is in there now is too damn big to fit into the the hex the the hex slots on the grub screws so we need to turn around we need to carry it around with it that that's something that's going to be clanking around there and there and well you get the idea okay so if you could put in a small selection of the common metric hex key screwdrivers in there that would be something that would be really really useful now, the next thing that I put in there, I, I, I mentioned in the build cam footage, was the fact that I personally, and now I, I have to stress this, I personally use a dental probe, the kind that the dentist uses for finding cavities and for scraping tartar and all that kind of good stuff off your teeth. But I personally find that an extremely useful tool especially for placing wicks, for ensuring that there is sufficient room, like on my KFUN4 uh, clone decks, when I put my wick in there, I use that, the, the hooked, not, uh, hold on. Let me, let me get it out here so I can show you the one that I'm talking about. It's not this one, okay? It's this one, okay? I use this a lot for 
pushing the wicks down into place and then for placing them and for making sure that they're spread out and just about everything I need when I'm wicking. Plus, not only that, but this tool and this tool is absolutely fantastic for when you're cleaning up a badly set, gunked set of coils. You, whenever you take the wicking out and then you heat the coil up and everything else and you try to burn off that charred gunk that's on there, inevitably there's going to be a little piece on there that's going to get stuck there, that's stuck to the coils and you can't get it off no matter what. Between this and a old toothbrush that's no longer usable for, well, what it was originally designed for, a toothbrush. I can get my coils looking absolutely spotlessly clean. The toothbrush gets off all the the ashed gunk that was on there, and this thing here goes after the encrusted, well, sorry about this, tartar that the juices inevitably leave, especially if you're using a lot sweeter juice. There's usually ethyl maltol in there, and that ethyl maltol will cause your coils to get gunked up in double quick time. This is a great tool for cleaning that. This is a great tool for wicking, okay? As a matter of fact, both of these tools I used when I was wicking the vertical coil that I put into the VRDA that I was playing around with that I mentioned earlier and I posted up on my Instagram account. It was, it was an experiment just to see what was going on. But yeah, seriously, a tool like this doesn't have to be this long. Doesn't have to be this long. It can be half as long. You can turn around and cut this thing in half. Put the put this tool here on this end, and that big. That's it. Just like that. And you could even cut down on the the size, the length of the the neck here on this. You could probably make this half as long. Make it same size over here on this side, going down to. This shape of a tool in there. Um, everybody that I have shown how to make use of this tool when they're doing their wicking and stuff like that has absolutely loved it because there are times when you have a tiny little jeweler's screwdriver and you're trying to push wick in there and it really becomes a pain in the butt. Yeah. Um, one other thing. I don't think I mentioned this in the build cam. As I said, I shot the build cam footage last week, so I'm going strictly by memory here. But in the slots where you have the, oh, hold on a second. This, okay, this is the piece that was in there that you take out to allow you to put in your 18650 batteries for taking them with you. If you could take this piece out and put in a small plastic tube, a hard plastic, clear plastic tube that people could throw their grub screws in, could throw in O-rings into it, stuff like that, little small parts that they they have. If you throw in a little plastic tube in there, just the size of an 18650, just like this, throw that in there. I think a lot of people would really like that because that would give them a place where they could throw all those little parts. Also, maybe a second plastic tube that people could put in pre-made coils like some of the coils that I think you guys make if I'm not mistaken or that I've heard that you are planning on starting to get into mm -hmm. so that's pretty much it the flash screen that I put up originally with the information all you know all of the the written information and stuff like that on what comes in the kit that's up there I got this, like I said, directly from Coilmaster. So the price that was quoted on there is the Coilmaster MSRP. I'm sure if you look around, you could probably find it for less of an expensive price. So take a look around. See if you can find it. But I definitely suggest that if you are into doing any kind of rebuilding of your atomizers in any way, shape, or form, go and get this kit okay it will save you no end of grief and it will save you no end of hassles ladies and gentlemen I want to thank you very much for joining me here 
I hope I haven't borne the living life out of you. But it's everybody has a different view on things. Everybody has a different take on things. We each and every one of us do what we do in a slightly different way. And it is a wise man or woman who listens to other people about how they do the same things that they do. Because you never know when somebody might actually give you an idea. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining me. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand and may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Take care. Till next we meet. God bless.